Okay, let's see what's going on in the gold jungle at the moment. We have a Diana leaving base with a warding totem against the fiddlesticks. Now watch what the Diana does. He goes back to base to sell the totem to buy a scanner, and then I didn't even again. And sits on this blue buff. That's it. But the problem is you're against uh, fiddlesticks, right? So what do we need to know about fiddlesticks? Where he begins, where he passes, why? Because we're Diana. And we do the same thing. So if we can go opposite, that's even better for us. Also, they have a Shaco. Now, I'm not pretending to know that this is about to happen, as I don't really see Shaco supports do this for their junglers very much. But it's more about the principle of, hey, I kind of just want to start on the bottom side, sequence up, maybe snowball the Yorick a little bit and let him be. Um, or I can start top side and sequence all the way down, but at least I'm watching entrances. No, no watching entrances, chilling on the top side, no warding totems, and has a scanner. You do not need a scanner as a farming jungle first rotation. You can track when people ward, how they ward, and you can walk around them. You don't need a scanner at all. What you do need are warding totems against farming junglers because you need to track where they're going to path. Now, at this particular stage, Diana's going to do this. Fiddle 6 is getting a nice free... A uh, moment here, he's got the effigy as well, right? Like, he's fully covered because of the effigy also. Bonus hack for that one. She's gonna shop here and now. Wait, where are my raptors? Where's my red buff? Did he take also my krugs? All of a sudden, totally compromised. Oh, <laughs> almost walked up in the vision uh, fog of war. The effigy is gone. Fiddle now is here. He should recognize, okay, look, the Diana should have at this particular stage uh, noticed. That's so good. Notice that the stuff was gone, and she hasn't shot up to invade me or gone on the bottom side. The Diana, rather than being too gold, you absolutely must head over to Vukayu.gg. I have a free jungle improvement resource, as well as a dedicated program where we have jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching VOD libraries, weekly free video content seen nowhere else, as well as Q&As and patch note rundowns, as well as a private jungle discord. And if there's one thing I'm good at, it's making junglers reach their goals, as we saw with the record number of people hitting them at the end of season 13. If you want to climb faster than anyone you know, jungle diff every game you play, click the link below or head to Vukayu.gg. And focusing on countering the uh, counter jungling the fiddle and getting into his face here, you could because uh, just down is kind of chunked, right? Didn't shop here. This wave is pushing up. Like, what do you do as Diana? You've got to kind of try and get into his face right here. However, she looks up and sees, hey, I got to gank off on the Wukong. Now, we're not talking about execution necessarily. We're not talking about, um, is this a good idea? We're just basically saying, I like that she looked up, saw a gank. Is something she could do, saw a Wukong with no sums, and said, hey, Yark, let's go ahead and try and kill this guy. Unfortunately for them, they cannot do anything about him whatsoever. He stands still. <laughs> and it, that's fine. We can deal with this. But, I, okay, this we cannot deal with. I like the idea. I like the idea. And when I talk about gold-level jungling, silver jungling, platinum jungling, whatever jungling, right? I'm not talking necessarily about, hey, look, you did this thing and died. I'm saying... I like where your head was at, but the execution was a little off. That's it. That's all we're talking about. So, good indicator for this jungler that, look, I'm seeing up. I want to go do something about it. But look at the wave now. Assess, right? Okay, so this is a good decision in general. But is it a good decision right now? You've got here a stacked cannon wave with the arc is not even yet level 3. Guys, chuck no flash. You've got here Wukong, who obviously has used all of his summoner spells, but does have clone that will come up again. We know that the Fiddlesticks took out two things. We don't know about the third one. And now he disappeared. Did he go to here? Did he go to here? Pfft, nobody knows. So, from Dinah's perspective, you could invest now to check if he has done your Krugs. I think logically, you might assume he probably took them. Therefore, while I do what I applaud the effort here... The nature of the lane right now, the state of the lane right now is a bit like, if I look up, I see it, not something I want to do. I look at mid lane, I'm like, this is something I can do. Maybe I can affect this gank and then use this prio to get into his jungle to see what's up. What would happen if she did that? Let's look at the timer. She's mid lane, she's looking, nothing. She goes to the raptors, let's see. Boom, she would get free raptors. And if she had a warding totem, not a scanner, ward, got a red, but it shows up, cool. Now... You're thinking, but didn't you talk in, rec in recent memory about uh, leaving the raptors as like a bait? I did. So ward and go to the red. Start the red up. Fiddle shows up, most likely does the raptors first. While he's doing the raptors, you're at his house taking his shit. Red into Krugs, kite it out. Don't die to the Wukong, play, uh, play it well. If this is now gankable, gank it and the fiddle will be trailing you with nothing to do. After this, you can go to your jungle. He could follow you, but then you've got... Yeah, uh, you know, you've got the Pantheon in the mid lane here, you've got the Yorick. 
I don't think he'll do that. And if he does, he should die. So we use his invade and the fact that he's now trying to do a three quadrant, which takes a lot of time against him. Because you have no camps on your side, you've got a little bit of a time advantage here, which we can use to get out ahead of him. And now he's done this, lost two camps as well. And an edge camp is more valuable than the Raptors. And has nothing to do with the top side. He's going to have to reset. Out of base, he's going to go back to the bottom side. But if you're a smart Diana, you know that he started on your side. So the Raptors are going to spawn way before anything that spawns on the Fiddle Sixer side. Because he did Raptors, Red, Blue, Grump, Wolves, the Grump and the Wolves are going to spawn so much later. Like, say he finishes the Wolves right now, they're going to spawn at 518. He hasn't even finished them. Let's see. Boom. 526 is when they're going to spawn, right? So this will spawn, let's just say, 505. If now he's got nothing to do, he's trailing you, and he can't even do the scuttle cap, he goes back to base at 430. Got like 30 seconds to do nothing. What do I do? I take the scuttle cap, look bottom lane, sit around. You can see how this invade can be used against him. And in gold and in platinum, you're not always going to see it, but that's why these VOD reviews are good. I'm helping you, hopefully, to see some things. And the next time you're in the situation, you think about that extra option. You think about the fact that maybe this isn't the best gang to do. So what happens is, instead she gets super duper chunked, Fiddle Six now sees her and says, I can counter gank this, I can get on her face a little bit, which of course he does, but Wukong gets the kill, fine. So she runs it down, and that was not one of the scenarios where it was like, hey, I have nothing to do, I don't know what to do. That was a scenario where it was like, I got nothing to do in my jungle, what can I do in his jungle? And if you did move up here, shadowing this trade, see the Raptors gone, hit the plant, see him in the Krugs, what does that mean? Look at him, see no blue, you know all of this is available. So this time invested into getting information tells you what his next moves will be. And that's more powerful here than death. In my opinion. Maybe you don't agree, but that's what I think. So it's 406 now, Grump will spawn thusly. Fiddle 6 gets the top scuttle, gets to go to the bottom scuttle. Now protects against counter jungling by going for a Raptors. I think actually it's not a silly thing to do. Oh, he showed. Um, this is irritating. Nice little maneuverability. We got the rel rotating. In theory, the fiddle should not greed for this whatsoever. Wasting his time a little bit, in my opinion. But again, why is he wasting his time? Because he took the scuttle crab, cut across the scuttle crab to deny the Diana, then try to get in her face. And this is where the very important thing is. I've just updated the by the end of the month the gold, uh, all the courses by the end of the month will be fully updated with the season fourteen chapter at the end just to contextualize all the fundamentals in the modern day. But the biggest thing I explained for the Emerald coaching course, which you can kind of start to think about now in, in, in gold, is that if you got a 20 second lead, tempo wise, I just need to maintain what I'm doing. I don't need to try and force it or lose it because if I have a 20 second tempo lead and the Diana plays very, very well afterwards and I play very, very well afterwards, I'll still be 20 seconds up in tempo. Not quite, but you understand the reference. So keep your points lead and you're good, right? Instead of trying to cash that 20 second lead to run and steal Raptors. He's costing himself a lot of time in Econ to steal Raptors. Dinah's costing years of my life having to watch whatever the hell that was. But if the fiddle just says, cool, she died, I take this. Right? Then I can go and do my quadrant. And if Dinah shows bottom lane for a gank here, then you can take her quadrant again and maybe in the grubs. Like you're fully set. Or you can just reset and protect your blue side. You've got all of the control in the world. But he went for a double scuttle just to try and take Raptors, which he didn't even get. So the Fiddle now is 27 CS, one assist, five minutes into the game, level four. Guys, you should be at least 36 CS by five minutes if you're full clearing jungler. How do you get there? Full clear, take a Scarlet Crab, that's 28. Woo, go back to base, take the respawn of this one and this one. Boom, 32, 36, now I can loop into Grubs. How do you get there? Well, you can throw in two ganks for that very easily and still be in that point. It, there's no difficulty in actually achieving this and now obviously the dinosaur says hello can i contest your grubbies uh, i see you're taking those and i would like some oh no the monkey's showing and is it can this can only be a family guy skit because of what on earth is driving you to make these decisions the video on the main channel become a path in god this is why I made it. Because this path thing is so suboptimal, so compromising, and puts you in this position of look look at the map. What does she do now? Got a random grump on the top side. No camps on the bottom side. Got a dragon. Got some camps you can counter jungle. And the fiddle now 
All he has to do is keep being useless. He can just literally run around like a matchstick donkey made by a three-year-old and do whatever the hell he wants. Now, fortunately, he didn't track the Diana. He goes for his grump, so he's kind of missing it, messing up my point here. And Diana just get away with things. But it's... it's you're both level four at six and a half minutes. The Fiddlesticks made the proactive play. How are you making a proactive invade level one and you're still down completely on experience? We find a level five here. The Dino doesn't even think about him again. That gets fully sucked. Fully sucked, ladies and gentlemen. You could not be sucked more by this uh, Fiddlesticks if you wanted to. No thoughts about where the enemy jungler is. The, the fundamental thing, the overarching principle I teach you in gold, jungle denial, start to think about it. You don't have to be good at it. You just have to think about it, right? Where is the enemy jungler? What is he trying to do? If I see him take my shit, do this quadrant, 20 CS, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Cut up to this gank here when I die. I click on him. I can see him. Okay, 20 CS. He's going to go to the scuttle crab. All right. I think he's going to go to the top side quadrant. Yeah? But then he crosses over and does a double scuttle. Oh, now what's he going to do? Probably come from a raptors. I'll take those. Cool. Then he invades me. All right. Now what? You keep having to ask the question, what is the enemy jungler going to do? Why is this taking so long? Does anyone have... Qu I, have I have a lot of questions. I have a lot of questions about what's going on here. Like, you only have Sork Boots trying to do a Mountain Dragon by yourself. Um, you know, when, like, you could be doing all of your camps again at level 6. This dragon looks like a fun thing for you to do, Ezreult. It looks like a fun thing for you to do if you're the Fiddlesticks, but... As I said earlier, I got my lead. I'm ahead. All I gotta do is maintain my tempo of farming, my clearing, play around my six. She will never catch up as long as I play the right way. And maybe sometimes I compromise my farm to gank and use my six, but she will feel desperate. She will overcommit for things. I can't counter gank her too with some good tracking. So while this sounds like, okay, well, this is this is a bit more advanced for gold jungling, gold jungling than maybe I thought it would be, but I don't agree. I think. It's, it's worth spending a bit more time in gold, learning these things and getting good at them, because then you're going to go from gold to platinum to emerald way quicker. Way quicker. I've done this a lot with people. This is how I like to coach gold players, because, I, sure, you can do some cheese shit and random stuff that makes you feel good, but and you'll get to platinum, but you'll go back down to gold again. You know, you won't stick around. You've got to have this level of thought go into your game now if you want to ascend to that next tier, which is diamond, Right? That's how you begin this journey. And it will take you a little bit to simulate all of these things. But again, it's not that difficult, I believe, in my opinion. Right? You just ask questions. Where is he? Where is he going? Press tab. What has he done? And you try and answer them as best you can. And obviously, you'll get better at answering them the more you consume content and play games. Now she's 1-3-0. He's 0-1-2. Goes to the bottom line here. It's a shaker. As real, so it's a tough one unless the, the Ral wants to go in. Holding the wave. Middle 6 is just waffling around at 926 uh, we've got two farming junglers who should be playing around their ult, right? Two farming junglers should be, should be playing around their ult. Did we just flash in on a, on a, on a, on a pantheon? That is a life decision. And they haven't used their ult yet. Farming junglers, based around six and fast sequencing, have not yet lose, uh, used their ults whatsoever. Fiddle six is still waffling on the top side. Dan is just not doing it. No, no counter jungling. There, there's their first ult. Dies in a wave because it does damage. Bill Six is getting this for free. It's chaos. It's absolute chaos. So, adaptive pathing is one of the best ways to think about jungling as you get into uh, gold and platinum, right? You're going to start adapting when players make these plays against you. You realize, look, I lost my raptors in red. All right, what does that mean? What can I do about it? Maybe you are rocking to side to side when you think about it. But jungle denial and adaptive pathing, two most important things for gold junglers to really start to develop as a core skill it will serve you until challenger 100 percent. if you can knock out an enemy jungler's teeth in the game use adaptive power thing to prevent them doing the same to you like why are we showing up here we used our old fiddlesticks still has his why are you even going for it's gone focus on like, sacrifice it it's gone what can i do to maximize my gold and economy <laughs> do your camps he's top set again <laughs> again bottle lane cool shove hit this hit this hit this get plates Step up your speed. Step up your jungle denial. That comes in the form of invading a little bit cheesily. Should it have happened? No. But then what can Diana do to deny the Fiddlesticks further control? I explained that. I think we really could have done that. Counteracted it really nicely. 
And then we could have just left him alone and ganked bottom lane and got him the head. Because this guy hasn't really done anything proactive at all. He's walking around like a, like a literal donkey in the swamp having no idea what he's doing. And the Dian is like, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to sit bottom lane and fight in the wave. I'm going to sit top lane and fight in the wave. And it just makes no sense. It makes no sense. When you think about it rationally, why are you doing that? Because you don't know what to do. Why don't you know what to do? Because you don't ask questions in game. In the moment, you just say, right, what am I doing next? Where's the enemy jungler? What are they going to do next? My ult's coming up in 30 seconds. Where can I use it? Ah, Herald is spawning. Do I even want it or should I go counter jungling? Just ask yourself open-ended questions and see where it leads you. It's a big step uh, to figure out. And yes, you can ask them aloud if you want to, but personally, I don't. Well, if you stream and, you know, sometimes I do, yes, I am, but it is what it is. There's the ult, fiddle six counter See, this is, this is what I'm saying. There's the counter game for the fiddle. There's the counter game. That's it. Perfect. Good job, guy. Sees it. Rotates. We got another, uh, well, we got nothing. The Ziri's a little bit irritating, isn't she? Th that's it. That's how you do it. Boom. 153 Diana. For some reason. Rushing the Nashes, though, that is good. Puddle Sticks, main to actually just going back to Proto Belt at this stage. They're like, you know what? Let's just stick to Proto Belt. Uh, we got some AP from the, the Zodias and things like this. Cripplum is an item. Like, you're just thinking a little differently. Um, but the champ is on the rise again. You know, do we need to watch that? Like, we start off doing this dragon again. Looking at the map here, do we have the prior for it? Do we have the damage for it? Dana shows up and steals it. Panther goes in. That's a steal. It's a dead jungler. Huge comeback moment, potentially. Look, if this happens to you... It's just because you take way too long to do the dragon, but at the same time, it's a little bit of a random thing that does happen. And in Diana's case, I will give her credit for a nice base rotation, good steal, well done on her team and actually seeing this all the way through. As I was saying that, this Q should be up in a second anyway. There it is. <laughs> uh, ooh, a little tight. Uh, sometimes teams are desperate, and look, I would assume that they would want to go topside instead of coin flipping a steal, but if they honestly feel like they have the mid prior, the numbers prior, they can beat you and steal it, they will. So you got to factor those things in, but I accept that sometimes you try to do a dragon you think is free, they psychopathically rotate and try to do something about it, even if they shouldn't, and you die and you lose it, it, it does happen. You just have to go, why are you there? Because now all of this is up here, all right? And so as the fiddle has done here, nice job, I'll top line. Take his camps. Well, not quite, but, you know, in theory he should. Got a 20 CS lead now. Even though he died and lost a dragon. But it is. Now, the Herald is available. Firstly, you should take the Scuttle Crab so that you have the Scryer's Bloom tech. Obviously, we have uh, no map prior here whatsoever because the Tristana's gone back to base. Rel is rotating, but we do have the Wukong, so scan. Snack things up. Get some vision control. Have a look to see what you can do. We have no ult there, Wukong, but he decides to go in. If your laners are super fed and they can do that and just kill the Diana who's loitering for some particular reason, you see here as well. I'm the one the wolves. I see the Wukong. I'm down three levels and it's some why stay? You know? You've gotta keep yourself spaced out. Maybe to cope with this game. You gotta keep yourself distanced from the enemy fed laners that you cannot fight. And a lot of the snowballs uh, a lot of the snowball that the Wukong has had this game is a hundred percent from the Diana. And then he decides, hey, what if I just jumped in and, and, and threw that lead? That's the thing as well. Fiddlesticks in the meantime. Silver tendencies coming through. What if I just did the Herald? Like LeBron last night at the double overtime win against uh, Milwaukee with his BDR just walking around. That's the Fiddle right now doing his Herald. Just with a cheeky smile while not being involved. <laughs> he was injured. Set out for a game for his foot. So, same kind of thing, right? You're just sitting there and just smiling as your team's winning and you get an objective you don't have to try. <laughs> Lucky. Lane or gap? Yeah. Jungle diff? No. Didn't really do anything for lanes. The fiddle, to his credit, thought a bit about the jungle denial. I'll give you that, right? He decided to invade. He decided to cut off. He decided to double scuttle. He decided to invade the raptors. 
he just took it too far and he took it in a way that didn't make sense. You don't have to permanently do it. Once I've got that two level lead on you, I can just walk in and kill you whenever I like. And if I just full clear my jungle and gank a lane, you can't counter gank it because you'll die. You can't do an objective because you'll die. That jungle now denial kind of maintains itself, right? Unless you throw it, they're not going to get it back. And as long as you control the map and prevent them getting those moments, it will never happen. So, activating the Herald here for some peculiar reason to go drifting. Yes! Boom! Saka shakalaka. There we go. That's a dead fiddle. Diane in the meantime says, yes, but I died killing the Ezreal. We do not need to look at that. We got your six mites, six bugs, whatever, six spaghettis, and uh, I said three things and none of them were correct. Six grubs <laughs> with a herald and a turret charge. Woo! Did we get one more? Yeah, but now you're going to die from it now because there's no health left on that. And your your Wukong was like, I'm leaving. We ult over the wall, but it's a Ziri. What a disgusting <laughs> champion is Ziri, man. Like, uh, <laughs> they always complain, of, is this fiddle god though or what? Is he god? How does he leave? This is really the great escape, honestly. Well then. Well, that was impressive. Stupid, but funny. Take your hat off to him. He done good. He done good. Right. Back to base he goes. We're 18 minutes into the game. The next dragon is available. Fiddle's got double needlessly large rods plus a rocket belt. Oh, baby. Let's see what he can do with it. Let's see if we actually get this dragon. Hopefully we do. Diana is in the vicinity again. Like, why are you looking to steal? See, this is the problem. Stop, stop, stop. Just, you cannot. Leave the base, take your camps, push waves up, push waves up, push waves up, counter jungle this side, create some sort of pressure. Look at the blue side of the map. There's no pressure here. We're just coin flipping a dragon steal for zero reason. I never understand why we do this. I don't like it. And if you're consistently finding yourself in these games like this as a Diana, it's because you don't ever do anything to exert pressure on the map other than try and stop a jungler who's already beaten you. Then you're the same level, but... 3-7-4. Guys, I'm so good! He really is in a world of his own. That's what irritates me about this. Is that the fiddle has just thought in a very small way about jungle denial. It made the Dina lose her mind. She had no idea what to do. And now he's just watching the game go by as he does fiddle things and farms it up and ults here and there. Like he's not actually doing anything whatsoever to try and win the game. He's just existing. And he can because he's maintaining that lead, that 10 point lead throughout the game. And Dina's just refusing to actually, oh, she builds like a donkey. Uh, Dump with Storm Surge. I liked, go straight into Death Cap if you want, but like I like the Lich Bane and the Nash's combo. Plus the Zonias, plus Void Staff and Death Cap later on. Um, the Storm Surge, just, I, I don't think you need to buy it. You can, it's fine, but I don't think you need to buy it. You can, but again, is it optimal? Yeah. Now what happens in the rest of this game here? Let's have a look. The map literally sits in the same way. It stays the same way. Wukong kills the Pantheon. Where's Fiddle? Can we find Fiddle? Oh, there he is. I'm looking at the effigies. There's Fiddle. Diana's like fighting him in the jungle now. They're all dying on the bottom side, so no one's doing anything to actually push the map here from the red team. That's a big problem. And again, Fiddle and Tristana not helping the Wukong push here is a, is a big issue. Let's see. Wukong's going to be out of position. They're going to try and kill him. Fiddle 6 shows up. Wukong kills Diana anyway. Uh, Panther's going to ult in here. Wukong will die. Ult from the Tristana. Fiddle 6 is, is sucking, 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 sucking. Now he gets stunned and killed, just on a free damaging in the back, but does none of that said damage. Uh, Panther flashes back in, gets the Eclipse, plus the Sundered Sky, plus kill. Very high level League of Legends. Next, we do it again. Uh-huh. Here's Fiddle. There's Fiddle, like, yeah, yeah, you, you sit there, Fiddle, for sure, that will hit. You can walk up. You can walk up at any point. But what do you know for Caillou? I'm a, I'm a god gold fiddle. I know what I'm doing. Sure. All right. So that is now 4, 10, and 9. 3, 3, 10. Most passive fiddle in the world. Still gets a dragon. Uh, let's see. Again, we repeat the process. Finally, Ezra pushes to grab an inhib. Here's a fiddle doing nothing. Diana in the wrong position. Ah. 
the mites, the grubs. Useful. Useful. Yeah. If red team just grouped up, if the if the jungler from red team, if Fiddle Six just grouped up with a Tristana Wukong once or twice and ulted with them during a fight, they would have won this game already. But he's farming camps, split pushing. He's never where he needs to be fight wise. That's why they haven't won yet. Because everyone is fat, and the Fiddlesticks just has to show up and ult one time, and that would have taken the whole base. But instead, they don't. They go to the Baron. Now we're going to try and end the game, correct? Diana, again, not really doing anything. Wukong goes in. Fiddle Six is like, okay, maybe I should actually ult in this time. Come, Fiddle, please, go. Let's go. We can win the game here. There it is. See? See? Right. They, they, there you go. They, the first time, they just all decided... What if we group up and just do this? Because we have the lead. Boom. We win. So, a good lesson on how not to close, but also some lessons on what you can do to do so. Sometimes you just got to show up and actually ult. And that's all you really need to do. There's not a lot of macro theory. Uh, but early game, that was atrocious. But hopefully you can see some of the positive things they were trying. Execution was not so good, but at least they were trying things. And from this, you can make that execution smooth, right? You can just through that practice... Keep learning how to activate your tracking. Keep learning how to keep that pressure on the enemy jungler, the jungle denial. And honestly, keep that adaptive part thing going as well. When things happen that are not good to you, right. Where could they be? What can I do about it? Just simply ask yourself a question rather than, shit, it's all gone. 